What's up my people, this is Mr. Tui, creator of TSI Math Crash Course. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you three of the most powerful TSI math hacks that are gonna blow your mind. And even if they don't like actually blow your mind, you can still kind of use them to pass the TSI math test. And, and that's cool, right? Oh, and by the way, if you like this video, you're definitely gonna wanna access the full course. Just click the link in the description below to access the full version of TSI Math Crash Course. It includes over 13 hours of the best TSI math instruction available anywhere. Click the link in the description to get the full course. So without further ado or explosions, I present to you the top three TSI math hacks. Enjoy. TSI math hack number one, use common sense and estimation. Go ahead and read question number eight for us, please. Let me see that on the screen. All right. Richard bought three slices of cheese pizza and two sodas for $8.75. Jordan bought two slices of cheese pizza and four sodas for $8.50. How much would an order of one slice of cheese pizza and three sodas cost? What are we solving for here, Francisco? How much would an order of one slice of cheese pizza and three sodas cost? Yep. How much would an order of one slice of cheese pizza and three sodas cost? Hmm. Okay. And once again, the thing we're selling for is always in that last sentence of the question. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't know if you know what they're testing us on here. They're testing us on something called systems of equations. Okay. You're supposed to come up with like two equations with two unknown variables and there's a way to solve for them both and it's super complicated and super annoying. And I always coach students to avoid doing the operations because they always get lost. And I think if we step back for a minute and think it purely in terms of common sense, we can find the answer here. And I want to practice that. Okay. Well, let's go back to the beginning of the question. They tell us three slices of cheese pizza and two sodas cost eight seventy five. Okay, soak that in for a minute. Think about. Imagine that. Imagine three slices of pizza, two sodas, and paying eight seventy five for that. Can you imagine that? Does that sound reasonable? By the way. Mm -hmm. You said. Sorry, say that again. Just imagine buying three slices of cheese pizza at some like shop, some pizza shop. Three slices of cheese pizza and two sodas. Does that yeah. sound reasonable, by the way? Yeah. 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 And by the way, what's probably more expensive, the pizza or the soda? The pizza. Probably the pizza, right? Soda's always cheaper. Right? I don't know exactly how much the pizza costs here. Like two, two bucks, maybe? Two fifty? I don't know. Something like that. Two twenty-five for a slice. Soda's a buck something. I don't know. I'm just, play I'm just feeling it out, right? I wouldn't expect the soda to be much more than two dollars. But the pizza is always more expensive. Always. The burger is always more expensive than the soda. Always. I, I'm almost. Unless it's like a little fun size, kid size thing. But anyway, the pizza is more expensive probably. And that makes sense too, because right? then Jordan bought two slices of cheese pizza and four sodas. Uh, so we got double the number of sodas, but just one less slice of pizza. And, and he's paying less. Okay. Does that sound reasonable, by the way? Two slices of pizza and four sodas. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, here's the question. How much would an order of one slice of cheese pizza and three sodas cost? Hmm. Okay, now stop and just for a minute. I want you to look at the answer choices. I think there's two answer choices that right off the bat you can eliminate. Two of them that just don't make much sense without doing a single mathematical operation. I'm gonna say D and C. Why do you want to get rid of D? Because for one thing, like three slices of cheese pizza and two sodas, like is 875, but like one slice, one slice is like, like one slice and three sodas is like more expensive than that. It's like, that doesn't make sense. Which was, yeah, yeah. You're saying to get rid of D, right? Yeah. yeah, you're getting less, basically. You are getting less if you get, right, less than Jordan bought. Notice Jordan bought two slices of cheese pizza and four sodas. And in this situation, you're ordering one slice of pizza and four sodas. That's going to cost you less than eight fifty. 
Now, how much less we don't know, but you know it's going to cost you less than eight fifty. It can't be D. Why would it be more? That's insane. That's insane. Now, hold on. You want to get rid of C as well, and I, I agree. Why do you want to get rid of C? Because, like, I don't know. I feel like it's it's too close. It's too close, like, isn't yeah. it? It's too close. You're getting one less soda. Now, maybe if it were, like, two slices of pizza and three sodas, maybe. Something like that. I don't know. But that's only, that's, like, what, 75 cents less. Yeah. The only way that would work is if, like, one slice of pizza and one soda was 75 cents. But that's nuts. Right? That doesn't make any sense. Does that make sense, Francisco? Yes. I agree. C just doesn't make sense on a basic logical level as well. Interesting. 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 Okay. It's either A or it's B. Which one do you think is more likely to be the correct answer choice, Francisco? You're buying, imagine you're going to the, you're going to the pizza shop, you're buying one slice of pizza and three sodas. Do you think that's more likely to cost you three twenty five or five twenty five? For one slice of pizza and three sodas. Uh, I'm gonna say probably. I'm gonna go with five twenty-five. I'd go with five twenty-five as well. I'm so glad you said that because that's the right answer. Okay. It's five twenty-five. <laughs> three twenty-five is just not enough, right? Maybe three twenty-five for three sodas, or you know, depending on what how much the sodas cost. I don't know, but not the slice of pizza and the three sodas. That's got to be closer to 525. Just basic common sense. I think right off the bat, I would get, in fact, what I did is I got rid of A and D right off the bat. That was like 325 is just not enough for that. And 1725 is way too much. You know, very, I think very few students are going to solve this by solving the system of equations. Very few students. If you're comfortable doing it and you know how to do that stuff, fantastic, more power to you. I'm impressed. I mean, I could set it up if I need to. It's just really, really complicated. But I just want to show you that you can still find the right answer using common sense. You don't abandon your common sense in this test. Use it. Tap into it. Tap into it. That's exactly how I solved it here, and it gives you the right answer. Use it. Use it. TSI Math Hack number two. Draw a picture. All right. Go ahead and read the next question for you, please. The length of a rectangular garden is three yards greater than the width of the garden. If the garden measures 15 yards diagonally, what is the length? What is what is its length? For? Okay. So I'll be honest. What you just said kind of went right over my head because I <laughs> I, I need to see a picture. I need to see what this looks like. I need to see what this okay, looks like. Okay, you have to draw a picture. Let's draw a picture. Let's draw a picture. Do you think you could draw a picture here? All right, we've got a rectangular garden, and the length is three yards greater than the width. So a rectangle. Uh huh. Yeah. Let me see. And can you draw it in this space down here? It'll just be nice and clear. Everybody watching. That. Oh, okay. You want me to draw it, right? Yeah, I want you to draw. I want to see if you. I want you to practice this now. Draw this garden. Okay. I want to see it. I need to see it because I don't even know how to solve it until I see it. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> You're good. Great. This looks great, right? And just make sure the length is three yards oh, greater than the width. Yeah. You're good. Oh, it's starting to look like Kansas. Oh my gosh. Do you mind if I, just, do you mind if I draw it? <laughs> you know, there's actually, there's actually a rectangle function on, on this, but here, I'll just... <laughs> I'll just draw. I mean, there we go. Not, mine's not that much better. I'm gonna be honest. With you. <laughs> All right. So we got a rectangular garden. All right. Now it says that the um, the length of this rectangular garden is three yards greater than the width. Right. So this length here is three yards longer than the width. I guess that's. The length, but yeah. I get length and width mixed up all the time. I'll be honest. It doesn't matter. With you know, you know area is always it's still length times width. All right. So the bottom part is three yards longer than the top part. So that, does that make sense, right? That part is three yards longer than that part. 
Does that make sense? Uh, it's okay. I understand what you mean. Okay. Three yards greater than this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, than this one. Yeah. And we even drew it, right? This this length here is is three. It's, it looks bigger than, you know, than this length. Yeah. Right? So why not? Okay. All right. And then it says, if the garden measures 15 yards diagonally, so diagonally is just like, from here. Okay. Then what's its length, which is right here? What's its length? That's what we're solving for. It's the length. This is 15. Right? Does that make sense what we're solving for? Um, or no? Change of extent one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're solving for we're solving it says what's its length? What's the length of the gar of the of the what's this this value right? Oh, I was on eraser. What's this length right here? Right there. What's that length? So it's the length of rectangle. Yeah, three yards greater. Yep, than the width. So, look, we, look at the answer choices. Look at the answer choices. We know the length is either 9 or 10 or 11 or 12. Yeah. Do you see that? It's either 9 or 10 or 11 or 12. Let's test it and see if it could be 9. Could it be 9? Now, if the length is 9, what's... It, by the way, this is... look. Oh, it's a right triangle. It's a... You know, with a base and a height and a hypotenuse. Yeah. Um, if the base is nine, what's this length right here? Or I should say the width. That's the width. The base is nine. The base is nine. If the length is nine, what's the width of that rectangle? Six. It's got to be six, right? Absolutely, right? This is like that other question we worked on, right? Where it says the, the length is three yards greater than the width. So if the length is nine, yeah. the width has to be six. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're getting this now. You're getting this now. <laughs> You're getting this now. All right. Now you may be like, okay, well, how do I test that? Well, this is where we do have to go. We have to go back to our friend, the Pythagorean theorem. We do have to here. We have to. Okay. We have to. Now let's talk about that Pythagorean theorem again. Remember, the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared. Equals C squared. Equal C squared. You just got in there. For this question. Okay. Remember, A and B, those are the legs of the right triangle. Okay. Those okay. are the legs. So let's make, I don't it doesn't matter which one's A, which one's B. Let's make 9A. So we get 9 squared. And 6 is B. Is B squared. And that's got to equal 15 squared. It has to equal it. If it's a right triangle, which it is, and if the length is nine, I'm not sure it is. Could be. I'm not I don't sure. think. Well, let's calculate it, right? Let's count. We know we can. You got a calculator. What's nine squared? Nine squared is eighty-one. Eighty-one. What's six squared? And thirty-six. Does that equal fifteen squared? What's fifteen squared? Um, no. One seventeen. <laughs> Wait, what's what's fifteen squared? I'm saying oh, fifteen squared. I thought you were saying what? Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Squared, it's two twenty-five. It's two twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. Eighty-one plus thirty-six is one. I added eighty-one plus thirty-six. Oh, I got you. Yeah. What is, and what is that? I need to know that too. Actually, what is that? One seventeen. One seventeen. Okay, so one seventeen doesn't equal two twenty-five. So no. it can't be a. It can't be A. Because the Pythagorean theorem holds true for every single right triangle. Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> and you can say no. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I mean it. You can say no if you're like, I have no idea. I know, I know why it can't be A. You know, I understand the A squared plus B squared equals B squared. Yeah. And 9 squared plus the 6 squared equals the 15 squared on both sides. Yeah. Because 9 squared plus 6 squared is 117. Yeah. And the 15 squared is 
Five. Yeah. And if I go to 15. Yeah. Whatever, whatever values we pick for the length and the width, when you square them and add them, you got to get 225. You have okay. to. Because 15 squared is 225. And the Pythagorean theorem is always true. Okay. Okay. So let's try it for another. Let's, the answer is A is gone, by the way. It's not 9. So let's try another answer choice. Let's try 10 for the length. Right? Yeah. And if the length is 10, what's the width of this? Five. Term? Yeah, the, uh, no, not five. Remember the, the length oh, is, is the length is three yards greater than the width. Oh, wait, seven, sorry. Seven, absolutely. Does that make sense? I was, I, I don't know why minus 15 minus. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. Does it make sense now? Does it make sense now? Yes, sir. Oh, it's 10, 7. Okay, good. All right, so let's plug this. Our A, our A value is 10. Why not? Again, it doesn't matter which one's A, which one's B. We get 10 squared plus 7 squared. We're going to see if that equals 15 squared. 15 squared is still 225. Yeah. What's 10 squared? 100. 100, right? 10 times 10 is 100. What's uh, 7 squared? 49. 49. Is that a true statement? No. No, 149 is not equal to 25, so it can't be answer is B. And it's not. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Let's do it again. We'll try answer choice C. Eight. Yep. You got it. Eleven and eight. Let's do it. So eleven squared plus eight squared. Does that equal what are we trying to equal here? Oh yeah. <laughs> Fifteen squared is two twenty five. So eleven squared is one twenty one. Uh huh. And okay, so eight squared is sixty four. Okay. Does that give us a true statement? No, one eight, it's equal to one eight. Yeah, no, that's going to be less than 200. Yep, so C is gone. I sure hope D works. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope D works. I think it did the last time I looked this up. Sure hope it works. Let's try it. All right, so let's say the length is 12. What's the height or the width? Or width? Uh, nine. Nine, absolutely right. So it's 12 squared plus 9 squared. See, Pythagorean theorem is not too bad. When you're plugging the values, at least, Pythagorean theorem is not bad. Okay. So, okay, 12 squared would be 144. 144. And 9 squared would be 81. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 81. Please work out to 225. 144 is 225. Equals 225? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank goodness. There we go. TSI math hack number three. Plug in a value in place of the variables. And go and read question uh, three for us when you see that pop up on the screen. All right. Last year, a bakery sold W loaves of bread. This year, the bakery sold three more than twice the number of loaves of bread that sold last year. If next year, the bakery plans on selling twice the number of loaves of bread sold this year, how many loaves of bread does the bakery expect to sell next year? <laughs> what do we sell for you, Francisco? This is, a, this is a lengthy word problem here. What do we sell for? Uh, how many loaves of bread does the bakery expect to sell next year? Love it. Absolutely. Right. And the, la the thing you're selling for in word problems is always in the last sentence of the question. How many loaves of bread does the bakery expect to sell next year? Okay. And then look at the answer choices right here. We've got four different answer choices, and they're all expressed in terms of W, which is, I guess, the number of loaves of bread they sold last year. They tell us that in the question. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Once again, thinking in algebraic terms, this is really tricky. And like, I just have so much trouble like wrapping my head around this. Thinking in algebraic terms. So let's do what we always do. Let's deal with real values. Let's think in concrete terms. Okay, Francisco. Let's create a value for W, the number of loaves sold last year. Give me a number. Give me, tell, and keep it simple here. I don't, it doesn't have to be like, you know, realistic, like, I don't know, 10,000. I mean, I guess you could do 10,000, but like, give me a number for W. Just give me a number. Uh, three. We could do three. Absolutely. All right. Let's try it. So um, we're going to create that value for W. Now think about what this means here. It doesn't just mean W equals three. Yes, I mean, that. that's true. It does. But this means that last year, the bakery sold three loaves of bread. That's what this means. Does that make sense, Francisco? Yes. Okay. Okay. So last year, the bakery didn't sell W loaves of bread. No, it sold three loaves of bread. Okay. Now, it says this year, the bakery sold three more than twice the number of loaves of bread sold last year. Do you understand what that statement means, Francisco? Uh, the bakery sold three more than twice the number. I would say, like, basically two times three. And then, or, uh, yeah, two times three, yeah. and then, uh, plus, yeah, so two times three plus three. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So, so let me make it really clear. So that last year, the, they sold three loaves of bread, okay? If W was three, mm -hmm. we set that value. So this year, it says the bakery sold three more than twice the number sold last year. Okay, now stop and think about what that means. We're watching this recording here. They sold three more than twice the number of loaves of bread sold last year. Well, what's twice the number of loaves of bread sold last year? Uh, six. Six, right? Because that's just two times three. That's twice the number of sold last year. So that's six. But they sold three more than twice the number sold last year. So that's nine. just six plus three, which is nine. Yeah. That's it. So you've got to kind of chew on that statement and understand what that's saying. But it's so much easier to think about when you're dealing with real values. They sold twice the no three more than twice the number sold last year. That twice the number sold last year is six. It's three more than that is nine. So this year they sold nine. Any questions about that or does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. Great. And then they say, if next year the bakery plans on selling twice the number of loaves sold this year. By the way, you could probably tell me now then how many loaves do they plan on selling next year? If you're watching the recording, stop and think about it. See if you can figure this out. If next year the bakery plans on selling twice the number of loaves of bread sold this year, how many loaves do they expect to sell next year? Do you think you can figure that out, Francisco? Yeah, chew on that language a little bit. You can figure it out. That'd be two times nine, wouldn't it? Just two times nine, right? Next year, the bakery plans on selling twice the number of loaves of bread sold this year. So this year was nine. And next year, they plan on selling twice that number. They tell us that in the question. So next year has to be, you're right, two times nine, which is what? Eighteen. Eighteen. Just logically, we can figure all that out. Any questions about that, Francisco? No. Yeah, okay, great. All we got to do now is pick the answer choice that gives us 18. Because that's what the question is asking us to solve for. How many loaves of bread does the bakery expect to sell next year? We know if W is 3 and we set that value, next year has to be 18. Let's go through the answer choices, Francisco. Does the answer choice A give us 18? Well, we're plugging in, what, 2 times 3, right? Yeah, because W is 3. We set that value up here. Right? Yeah, so no, it doesn't give you uh, 18. No, that just gives you, yeah, that's 2 times 3. That's 6, so we don't have to worry about answer choice A. It's gone. What about answer choice B? Uh, yeah, two times three would be six. This is gonna be nine. Uh, no. Yeah. What's answer choice B give us? Nine. That's nine, right? Because that's two times three, plus three. That's six plus three. That's nine. Not eighteen. Don't have to worry about it. Answer choice B is gone. What about answer choice C? Uh, four times three. No, it gives you fifteen. Yeah, that's 15, right? Because it's 4 times 3 plus 3. That's going to be 12 plus 3. That's 15. Don't have to worry about answer choice C. I sure hope D works. Does D give us 18? Yes, it does. Heck yeah. 
4 times 3 is 12, plus 6. That sure is 18. We can confirm it. The answer is D. Any questions about that, Francisco? No. Okay. I think any number for W will work. <laughs> uh, I, I was prepping this morning. I tried 10 for W. That works. I tried 1 works. 1 works. You can try it on your own if you want to with different sets of values. Doesn't matter what you pick. Just think in concrete terms and then test all the answer choices. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about those TSI math hacks. If you like my answer explanations and you want more of the tips, tricks, and strategies that are gonna help you succeed on the TSI math test, then you're absolutely gonna wanna access the full course. Just click the link in the description below to access the full version of TSI Math Crash Course. Now look, I gotta warn you. If you love complex math operations and you wanna learn things the step by step by step by step by step way you learned in your high school math class, then this isn't the course for you. But if you wanna learn the fastest and the easiest way to find the answers and the surest way for you to pass this TSI math test, then this is the course for you. So just click the link in the description below, access the full course, and I'll see you guys on the inside.